So what I want to do today is create an automated project management sheet. This is something that I personally made myself recently, so it's pretty much on the top of my mind. To manage projects internally, if you have multiple people, you have a project, you have a status, and you have some person's name assigned or assignee or someone who's assigned to this project and they have some status. So we have, let's say, project one, project two, and project three. And we want to do a few things. One, we want to create a drop-down menu that has some statuses here. We'll click drop-down. We'll add here completed or complete needs review, and we'll say in progress. So we have three. We can say yellow for this one. Needs review has a red, and complete is green. Once something is in progress, it'll change to yellow. And then when we need a review, it will change to red, and complete will be green. But if we have a number of projects here, let's change this to colon B. If we have a number of projects here, it's going to get pretty messy here. We're going to call this in progress and we want to, or actually we'll call it projects. And we want to create a duplicate of this and call it complete, but we want to delete all of these items. So let's make a little header here. I do want to just use, let's make this a little bit prettier with quicksand 12. We have project status name. We want some names here of people who are in our company. Maybe we assign each person. We have Carl, let's say, and Ben, just two. We can give them colors as well. Carl is purple and Ben is blue. Okay, we can have that there. And what we want to do is a few things to this, to make this really automated, to make this a place where we can keep track of what projects are completed, what's in progress, who is it assigned to, and if they're completed or not. What we want to do is add automated emails. So we're going to go to App Script. We're going to these emails when are changed. We're also going to move anything that's complete over to the complete tab. So one thing about the complete tab I want to do is delete everything except the first two rows. That's just something I do to make it cleaner. I want to also make it have exactly the same formatting as the other sheet. You'll see why soon because basically what we're going to do is we're going to insert a line above here each time it's complete and we want the same formatting each time. So let's go back to our app script and start writing our app script. To do automations uh, when we uh, edit things we we'll use on edit and we'll use an event here as the input. We're going to do this to move so this on edit will move when complete. We're going to need to do another function here. Create a function to send email when needs review. We also want to create a function to send email when assigned. If we have individuals here and say I'm a project manager and I say I have, I create a project, I say it's in progress, nothing. And I just assign someone, say Carl, I want to automatically let Carl know, hey, you've been assigned this project. Go here and check it. Go here, meaning this sheet. So let's do that there. And we're going to have to do these separately because there's a little bit of an issue with on edit as a simple function or a simple trigger, rather. It cannot send email. But we do have a way to on edit send emails, which I will show you later. But the first thing we want to do is move anything that's completed to the complete tab. So how do we do that? First, we need to make sure we get the row. We need some variables, basically, because we're going to say if row is greater than one, meaning it's not the header, and column, or col, we're going to use as a, actually, we'll use column here. Column is equal to two, making sure that we're editing the second column, double ampersand again, and edit value, the value that we're editing is equal to complete. Do we say complete or completed? Complete. There we go. And we want to make sure we're on the right project on the right tab, which is projects. So tab name equals projects. So we want to make sure all of those are true. And then we will we'll come here and move the row, which in that we will copy the row to complete and we will come back and delete the row. So that's what moving really is. There's not a single function that says, hey, move this row. It, what we do is create a function that copies the row to complete. We have to actually also insert a row at the top of complete, copy it, and then come back and delete the row from projects. That's how we quote unquote move something. So what we got to get these variables, variable row equals event.range. Pretty simple. Variable column is going to be equal 
is event.range.getColumn. Variable edit value, meaning the value that we're editing to, will be event.value. That one is pretty simple, just value. No, just value, it's auto-completing. There we go. Variable sheet name is equal to spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet actually not spreadsheet sorry sheet get name this sheet name actually it's going to be tab name here tab name is going to be projects and it's this name here we can also log these if we wish but let's first insert a row at the top of complete which we need variable com equals spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet dot get sheet by name complete. So we don't have to type that over and over again. We can just say complete dot insert row after, actually we want before three and nope, sorry, before two. The issue here is if we insert a row underneath the first row, it will have the formatting of the first row. But if we insert a row above the second row, it will have the of the second row. So that's really important to know. We want to insert there. Okay, we did that. Now copy the row from projects to complete. So we have the row that we're editing. We know that we're editing it to complete. So all we need to do is, again, get the variable projects. So this will be the same, except a different name, which will be actually misspelled complete there. Projects. Now we need to copy the row to complete. So we'll do projects dot. Um, no, we don't need to do that. Actually, we need to variable range to copy. We can just do it this way. Uh, complete dot get range. We're gonna go to the row. We want one column and we want only one row. Oh, sorry, the first column, one row. And then the number of columns is gonna be max. We're gonna need that variable as well. Variable max equals, and this will be pretty simple. Complete dot, sorry, not complete, projects. Projects dot, we also need max so we'll call this projects equals max columns. We'll need that as well. Okay, so we are going to actually project, sorry, projects.getRange, get the row, get all of the columns, get values. No, we don't need the values. We just do copy to. Where are we copying it to? Is we're copying it to complete dot get range. We are gonna go to the second row because we've inserted a row. So we know the second row is blank. We do one, one, and max columns complete. This should be max column projects here. There we go. And that should, if we say project is complete, it is now entered here. But now we have to go back and delete it from projects. So how do we do that? We just go to projects.delete row. And which row do we delete? We delete the row that we got up here as well. So that is saved. And we're only doing that if it's complete. So we can check this by doing something like needs review and making sure that, that does not copy over here. It's not doing it. But now let's do complete and it should delete this row. There we go. It's deleted the row. Fantastic. So we have our automation done on complete, but the next thing is we want to send an email when someone changes to needs review. Let's do that down here. I'm going to create a new function called send review email. We have an event here as well. What we need to do is we're going to use the on edit here as a simple trigger, but we're going to use the on edit as a dollable trigger for this one because permissions for sending email does not allow us to do it through a simple trigger. We need to do a installable trigger, which I will show you again in a second, but we will use exactly the same stuff here. So we're going to use all this as well. We're having the same event, but we want to make sure it is needs review. And if that is so, we will send an email. Who are we going to send an email to? Let's first do gmail app dot send email. And this is going to be a simple email. It's going to have someone who it's to, a subject, and a body. So we need to create those variables. Variable to equals, I think it's session dot get active user. We can also get owner. I think it's going to be spreadsheet app dot get owner, get active spreadsheet, get owner. This should, let's look at this. Ah, we need to get owner dot get email. That's what we need. So whoever is the owner of this spread should be the one who is getting these emails. That's what we're doing here. So I don't have to put my own email in there. Someone can use this without putting their own email in. So the subject, variable subject should probably be needs review and we want to get the project name, project name. How do we get the project name? We know what row we're on. We just need to do 
variable project name equals spreadsheet app dot git. Let's get these, this as well. We want projects dot git range. The range is gonna be the row, one, one column, number of rows one, number of columns one. So this is just the very first thing in a column and we're gonna get the value. And that is gonna be need, need review, needs review, project name. Variable body is equal to, hey, just need this project reviewed. What we wanna do here is also put project name and then it's gonna be interesting. Plus we're going to create a slash n is a new line. I'm gonna do that twice. And then I'm going to put the URL of the spreadsheet. So we don't have to copy paste this URL. It will automatically get the URL for us. So variable sheet URL equals spreadsheet app, get active spreadsheet, get URL. That's pretty simple. And we're just gonna include that in the email so that we can click on here and make sure if there's any other information here, we just want that project name that needs review. Maybe we have some extra columns here of information like where the ultimate link is, whatever the project is happening, notes on it, updates, last date, whatever. I want to do that. So we're going to send an email. Let's test that email now. Let's see. We have a invalid left saying 36. This should be a plus sign. There we go. Nice handy error message. We want to automate project management. So the first time we run this, we will need to authorize it. So we will get an error here, but we just want to authorize all of this. Let's allow. So the error will always come up that the range is undefined here if we are running this on edit from here. But we're not going to be running the on edit from inside of our IDE or in our app script. We're going to be running it in our projects. So let's say project test. We need to say needs review. And this should trigger the email. And so we can always see here in executions if there is some failure, like this one was a failure, but it was the one we ran. We can look at our inbox and see if we get an email. Look again, needs review. Let's make sure everything is hunky dory. Oh, the one thing that I actually forgot to do was trigger this send review email. And I was going to show you that. So now I will show you that right now. So let's go over to triggers. We need to actually create the trigger. In the instance of a simple trigger we do not need to create it but now we need an installable trigger because we have those we go to the bottom add trigger we're going to choose our function here send review email we do want the event source to be from spreadsheet but we want to change it to on edit so this sounds the same as using the simple trigger on edit but it allows us to send emails because we cannot send an email we cannot grant permission the right permissions to the simple trigger so now that we have that, we can delete this needs review. Let's say we've assigned it to Carl, needs review. And now we can go back to our executions and see if there's any errors or if it is triggered. So now we have a function send review email. It has a trigger, it has been triggered. We should get an email. There we go, needs review project test. And we have a link back to the sheet. So the next thing we need to do on our list is we want to create a function that sends email when assigned. So this is great for someone who's working on these projects to let the person in charge know, hey, we need this reviewed. We already added the, so someone can come in here, complete, and this will move over here to the completed tab. But if I want to assign a project, Carl's project, I'm. it's not in progress yet. It doesn't need a review yet. It needs to get started. And so I want to assign Carl here to the project and have him get an email. So let's look at what we need to do for that. We want to copy this send review email function and we'll edit this. So instead of send email, we'll send assigned email. We want to make sure that the column edited is the third column. So we're going back here, the C column, not the B column. And the edit value is going to be different each time. So just delete that for right now. And inside of here, I'll say another if edit value is equal to Carl. We'll do something. And then same, but if, who's the other name? Ben. So depending on who it is assigned to, I'm gonna do something. And that's the only options I wanna give it. I don't want anything else to happen. So we are going to take this whole email and we will send an email, but we're just gonna edit the email. Let's format this, there we go. Okay, in this one we want, hey Carl, you've been assigned. Assign project. We have the project name as well. We want the, to be someone else. I'm going to put 
my own email here, but this could be, you could type literally anyone's Carl's email right here. We need the URL. Hey, just you got assigned this project and check it out at this URL. Same down here. I'm going to use my own email address instead of the owner email address. I'm going to write assign project to Carl and here because we're going to be getting them both to Ben. So we can see if this is actually working. Again, uh, this send assigned email, we need to go back to our triggers and add a new trigger. Add a trigger, which function to run, we want to send assigned email from spreadsheet and on edit. The good thing is that these, these edits or these functions will only run really if the if statements are all true, if all of these are the, right. So let's look. Let's assign Ben a project, Ben's project. We don't need a status yet because it hasn't been started. We hit Ben, and now let's see if we get an email. We'll refresh. There it is, already assign project to Ben's project. If we do this for Carl's second project and assign it to Carl, let's see if we get that email. There we go, we got Carl's second project. So assign project to Carl, and now we have a link. So we can add interesting stuff here, right? If we had more values, if we had more information, we could add it. But the good thing is that we have this link to the sheet that this is being sent from. So if Carl needs to update this, he can go and update it to in progress. And if you if he needs a review, he can click needs review and we will get that reviewed email. There it is, needs review, Carl's second project. So that's pretty cool. We've now created a completely automated project management suite with just a few bits of code here. This is not that many, less than a hundred lines of code, and you can get the code right here. If you're a member of Better Sheets, grab it right away. If you're not a member of Better Sheets and you're watching this somewhere else, become a Better Sheets member and enjoy this automated project management 